My name is Lydia Wiegert, and I'm finishing up my undergraduate degree in elementary education at Edgewood College. I will student teach this upcoming fall, which means that I've just spent the past five semesters preparing intensively to become a teacher. These classes have taught me how children think about solving math problems, how students acquire language, both in their first years of life and at school, how children develop cognitively, behaviorally, emotionally, and socially, and how children cope with trauma and stress. My classmates and I have spent hours and hours reading about and discussing theories and methods of teaching, the history of public education, and speculating where education might be headed. And let me just say, one recurring theme through all of this learning has been that good teaching is not intuitive. Let me just tell you one story to illustrate this. I've known since before I started kindergarten that I wanted to be a teacher. In elementary school, I had a classroom set up in my basement, and I would teach my stuffed animals and any poor neighborhood kids who I could rope into being my students. When I was in middle school, I would take my experiences at school and ponder how I would handle such situations when I was a teacher. I came up, I'm sure out of frustration with my peers, with the brilliant solution to send any disruptive students out of the classroom or to the office. I was going to be a no-nonsense kind of teacher who wasn't afraid to dismiss students to, in order to achieve my goal of a perfectly functioning classroom. This seemed like the ultimate solution to me until I actually started learning about the way education works. I now know that removing a student from the classroom works to break down the classroom as a community, which is truly the foundation for productive teaching and learning. I now know that students who act out in school are often crying out for help and need a trusting and supportive adult with whom they feel safe. I now know that kicking a child out of the classroom works against my goal of maintaining a positive and productive classroom environment. I have no doubt that anyone who cares about children and teaching could learn to become a great teacher. I am certain, however, that it takes deliberate and rigorous training, not to mention years of experience, to develop into a high quality teacher. Governor Walker has slipped a provision into the next budget which would eliminate requirements for people to obtain a college degree to teach non-core academic subjects and that would allow individuals who had not obtained a degree in education to teach grades 6 through 12. This measure would lower standards for public school teachers in Wisconsin and I'm here to tell you that the students in our state deserve better. Students deserve to be taught by compassionate and competent teachers who know how to do more than deliver content information. <laughs> Connecting with students and getting to the point where you've built enough mutual trust so that you can ask a student to take a risk, to grow academically and personally, that's at the heart of good teaching. And it takes more than a bachelor's degree in biology to make this happen. While the efforts by legislators to lower Wisconsin teacher standards are one major concern for me, I find that the more I learn about our system and history of public education, the more concerns arise. This is an exciting and pivotal moment in the story of public education in Wisconsin. Whether you have kids in public schools now or not, even if you are a kid, the decisions and demands we make today will affect each of us in the future. A free, high quality public education is truly the cornerstone of our democracy and public schools are at the hearts of our communities. It is now up to us to fight to preserve and protect this precious institution. So I encourage each of you to learn more about the issues and become an advocate. It's for your future. Now is the time to stand up and demand the best for public schools in Wisconsin. Thank you.